between Twilight Imperium 4th Edition from Fantasy Flight Games. This is a, a game that really needs no introduction in the hobby. It's got a long heritage and um, likewise it plays long as well. I've never played this game so I'm really looking forward to getting to the table. It's uh, exactly in my wheelhouse. Long, epic, multiplayer, competitive, um, lots going on. Uh, I think I'm really going to like this game. Um, let's um, take the plastic off and see what we've got inside. The artwork on this is glorious and when it first came out I can remember the discussions that were had over this lion figure having a new robe. Um, it was quite funny at the time. As a, someone who was not familiar with the game. Inside the box we've got a stack of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 counter sheets. They each have got multi-purpose uh, tokens on. We've got galaxy, galaxy tiles um, here and I dare say, well, let's have a look. I'll, uh, I'll just quickly open these up. Yeah. And that's always a good sign. The uh, tiles started falling out as soon as I unwrapped the cellophane. But um, if we just have a, a quick look at the rest of the tiles. Um, <laughs> I'm just picking them up. Sorry, that one's upside down. I'm just picking up and the tiles are falling out, which I very much appreciate. Oh dear, they're all falling out. That's uh, beautiful artwork on these tiles, and nice and crisp and, um, yeah, very, very nice. I believe there are 51 different sector tiles in this game. Um, all hexagonal and lots and lots of tokens. One of my uh, biggest criticisms with a lot of FF, uh, fantasy flight games are the number of tokens that they put in this game, uh, put in their games, and this is certainly no exception. But when you're playing for the best part of eight to ten hours, then um, I don't think I can really complain about the number of tokens. Um, some stunning. Artwork on these nebulae and black holes here, wormholes maybe, not entirely sure, that's what I would say. And then we've got asteroid fields and a sun. I believe these are new in the fourth edition. As I said earlier, I've not played the third edition, but uh, this is the fourth edition and they did make some changes to it. And then this is the only different player board we've got, which is um, not filled with galaxy tiles, but other game markers. Um, I'm not entirely sure what they are, but I'm sure I'll find out. And then we get into some rule books. Uh, learn to play. Um, learn uh, a law compendium and a rules reference. I really like uh, learn to play and rules reference separated like this and especially for a game of this magnitude I think it makes sense. But the learn to play um, looks nice and clear and um, well spaced out text. There's only 20 odd pages and for the reputation this game has got as being very hefty um, that's surprisingly small. The uh, rules reference only goes to 31, well, 29 pages, all in. And then for those that are really, oh wow, look at that. You get some glorious artwork in the law compendium. You know what, I think I might uh, have a read of that tonight. <laughs> Um, and then some more baggies with more stuff. Let's have a look inside. A 
I believe um, these might be the player boards. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, so these are the player boards. They look quite thin, actually. I was expecting to have... Um, but there are six of them. And uh, this game plays from three to six players. And on BGG it says that it actually plays best at six players. Um, so I'll be interested to see if I can get a uh, six player game going soon. Oh, these I think are the player, oh no, these are the races that you can choose. So um, there are 17 different races and they all play differently. Um, asymmetric powers throughout the game. Every time you play with a different race, you'll have a different experience. Um, but a Federation of Soul, Yin Brotherhood, and uh, let's see if I can find the Lions, the Hakan. Um, but you can see the artwork on all of them is absolutely stunning. Fantasy Flight really have knocked it out of the park um, with this. And on the first flick through, I couldn't find the race that I wanted to find. I wanted to find the lion. But they weren't there. So that may be my misunderstanding of the game. Oh, there we go. The Emirates of Hakan. So all of those races, I believe, are on the, the uh, cover the cover art of the box as well. It's all very thematic and evocative. Um, what's next? Two decks of cards. So throughout the game, players will be competing to complete public objectives and secret objectives, and ultimately looking to score 10 victory points. Um, the first player to score 10 victory points through the course of the game is declared the winner. Um, and they do that by fighting each other and exploring systems. And here we've got a whole deck of cards, uh, fleet cards, power cards. If I'm being completely honest, so destroyer, I think these are upgrades to your fleets, but um, text on one side with some icons and cards which reference stuff on that side and then on the back different icons red and blue deck cards so I'll be curious to see what they are but hopefully this just gives you an idea of what's in the box not necessarily how to play the game <laughs> because I don't know is the short answer. And I'm just opening another deck of cards here. Um, these ones, instead of blue and red backs, we've got purple and green backs. Um, I wish it was more green backs, but hey. Um, and it looks like there's a more of the same. So the cards with these texts, they must be objectives, I think. Yeah, so during the status vein, gain three command tokens instead of two. Um, I'm curious how the objectives attract. But if I pick a colour, every player is going to have. Um, I'll just pick out a set. So we've got these. Um, Death Star looking miniatures. Um, these are called Death Suns, or War Suns, sorry. Um, Death Star, I think, is pretty much what players call them. But it's uh, uh, a city, a space city. And then I won't tell you what the names of these miniatures are, but we've got destroyers and cruisers and. Um, other smaller fighting vessels and basically ground offences, control markers, 
um, fighters, I believe. So I believe all players have got the same type of sculpts, although just looking at that, that may not be the case, but, and here's a transporter. So they all have got a very distinctive look and the, the sculpts on them are actually really crisp and sharp. So if anyone was inclined painting these up, um, the, uh, they would look amazing all painted up. But obviously you may lose some of the uh, utility of having green um, miniatures, red miniatures, etc. Oh wow, I've just taken the miniatures out of all of the wells. And I believe, yeah, there's more card decks in the bottom of each well. So I won't open up all those card decks, but there's a lot more cards than I was expecting. Um, and then finally, you get a bag of uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight ten sided dice. Which, there you go. Um, so that is a quick unboxing of Twilight Imperium from a player who has no idea how to play Twilight Imperium. Um, the production quality of this game looks amazing. Fantasy Flight Games have really hit it out of the park on this one. I believe it was a, a labour of love um, for Christian Peterson, the uh, uh, chief exec at Fantasy Flight, and it really does show in this game. There's been no expense spared, and um, it looks absolutely glorious. I can't wait to get it to the table and play it a couple of times. I'll be writing my review soon on awargamersneedfulthings.co.uk. Thanks for watching.